The Alpha Omega store is a family-owned and operated premier online store serving as your one-stop shop for all of your spiritual and self-development needs. At the Alpha Omega store, we offer you hard-to-find spiritual and ritual supplies, books, DVDs, personal development services, monthly specials, international shipping, and more. From spiritual supplies to business products and services, our mission is to provide you with the tools that will put you on your road to success. Purchase your quality products and services today at alphaomegastore.com. Bring yourself to a place of spiritual and holistic balance with exclusive life design services at osirislife.com. At Osiris Life, we offer our members exclusive one-on-one -on -one instruction, including three monthly service level options to choose from, monthly spiritual consultations, monthly podcasts and videos, custom tailored development plans, spiritual work done on your behalf, life coaching and support, and working solutions with real results. Awaken to your personal greatness and purchase your membership package today at OsirisLife.com. And now, back to our segment. Where do you start when everything seems to be falling apart? Try to be sane in an insane asylum. How long do you think you're going to manage? Your sanity ain't going to manage long in an insane asylum. Everybody got to be sane or you're going to go insane too. Who's sending me this message? Am I not getting the message because I keep seeing it? And I'm trying to feel the energy because at one time I was fearful of it because I did see it. I have a lot. My schedule is, like, really busy and kind of balancing that with um, spiritual life. And um, I, I guess you can call myself kind of a loner. understand something that initiation is a spiritual process you go through a spiritual initiation you cannot go through a bodily exercise in order to initiate into a spiritual reality it doesn't work you have to use spiritual exercises to initiate into a spiritual reality okay anybody could take yoga anybody could stretch and it feels good Anyone can stretch and, and, and stretch out their organs and heat up their organs. Does that mean that they're now initiated into the mysteries of a yogi? It just means that their body is more prepared to now initiate into the, the, to the mysteries of a yogi. Maybe, if that's the path they want to go. So in the same instance, when I do consecrations, it opens a person's reality up. It opens a person's awareness up. And it covers them with a certain vibration. So now when they want to go do that work to really become an initiate, it's it's much easier. For them, but, okay. But it's not an initiation. And I'll explain why. Uh, initiation is like a marriage. Okay. This is an easy way for you to understand it. An initiation is like a marriage. Okay. So a consecration is like an adoption. So I can adopt you into the family of Anu and share the strength and the power and the wisdom and the clarity of, of my spiritual um, servants and my spiritual guides with you. I can consecrate you into that. But the initiation requires a deeper and more silent and even a more subtle level of contract. Okay. So like I said, initiation is like a marriage and I cannot sell you a marriage can't sell you a marriage. You see, um, what I can do is sell you the ceremony that either precedes, precipitates, accommodates, or uh, follows an actual marriage, but I can't sell you the marriage. Uh, you must perform that act yourself after making a connection and agreeing with a willing partner. It makes sense, right? Um, so you find a partner that wants to work with you or that wants to put up with you, or, you know, depending on your disposition and you make a contractual agreement that we will be married. And in most instances you marry, if that may mean, uh, intercourse or some type of intertwining, 
uh, but there's a marriage, the marriage, the actual marriage you have to perform yourself. And then there's a ceremony. But sometimes there may be a ceremony beforehand to facilitate the marriage. So, you know, you may bring in priests and you may bring in people in your community so that they may set up a marital bed. And you may drum and give offerings and things like that. And then you go into your into your space and you consummate the marriage. That's making it real. There's no marriage before that. And then when you come out, there's more drumming and dancing and feasting and, and, and wine and all kind of things. You can pay for that. You can pay for that. But to try to just pay for an initiation or to pay for a marriage with an energy that you have never made a real true connection to, which again is so often, is like me charging you to actually rape someone. And and I know it sounds um it sounds a bit extreme, as you know, um, but that's what it really is. Picture it again in the sense of marriage. Okay, um, you see an energy that you like or a person that you like. You've never made any real, sincere, true connection. There's no, there's no silent or tacit agreement between the two of you. You go to someone and say, I want that person. I want that person to live inside of me. And they say, okay, $1,000, give me $5,000, $10,000. I'll give you a break. Just give me $600. Right? And what do they do? They take, they take that person and they take you. And they smash you together for three days. That's what it is. And then you feel their presence. You feel their energy. You and and through all the elaborate ceremony and the and the clashing of sounds and and the the uh, mystery of it all and the grave and solemn and ominous warnings that you're giving throughout through your readings. You really feel that you have connected to something, that you have actually done something, but you haven't. You just smashed against something that was not even willing to begin with. You can't sell marriage. Again, like I said, I can perform the ceremony that follows a true marriage, and I can also create an environment where a healthy marriage is possible. The consecration begins. That's that's the introduction to that energy. That's the introduction. Not you sitting down in front of someone's mat and they saying, oh, so-and-so wants you. Okay, well, if so-and-so wanted you, you'd know. <laughs> you know, you'd know. And you have to want so-and-so. And you have to then create a relationship. You see, the initiation is, is actually had in a quietness. Initiations, you you really and honestly initiate yourself. That's the truth of it all. Um, it may happen during a walk one day. It may happen in a quiet moment when you're just sitting in your room. You know, it, it may happen uh, when you're swimming one day or when you lost at sea or lost in New York or whatever. But an initiation is a quiet and personal thing. Now, the connection to a greater community and acknowledgement of a greater community that's not a quiet, that, that's a public thing. That's something that you bring a priest and things like that for. But an initiation change, changes the pitch and vibration of of you at an atomic level. Because really, that's your, your atoms are the medium for initiation. Now, I know many of you may listen now and say, well, yeah, I feel like I am initiated. Most of you are not. 99.9% .9 of you are not. I have to be honest with you. There's it, it's, it's it's few of you because... The first thing that you understand about the initiation is that there's a, there's a character change. How many of you will say in one breath, yeah, I feel like I'm connected to these energies and I don't need this and I don't need that. Uh, well, first of all, if you say that, then I already know you're not initiated because that's a pretty narcissistic statement. But the thing is, how many of you have that, but then you look at your life and you can see that the vibratory pitch of your life is not much further than the people around you. See, initiates, what they do is they transcend the backwardness of their race. That's what an initiate does. You know, um, races and, and collectives and groups of people, they're given religion. And religion serves each group. There's supposed to be more than one religion. You know, you don't always have to go into that homogenous thing where we're all one and we're, we're serving one God. That doesn't work for everybody. 
because everyone ethnically and genetically has a different set of needs. You know, now, of course, we all, most of us, I, you know, I'm assuming need to, to breathe um, and need to consume something in order to produce energy. Most of us. Uh, but then after that, things, things change. We have a different set of needs and not only collectively and racially, we have different karma that we have to address. So therefore it would require a different set of, of code codexes and doctrines and pedagogy to bind us back to the source, which religion is a binding back to the source. Okay. We all have different sources. And even if we said we have one sources, we all strayed and fell from the sources in different manner. Okay. So the uh, multitude of religions, there's nothing wrong with that. There's even nothing wrong with a multitude of deities, you know, um, polytheism is not a curse. Because some of us need different things in order to get back. Some need a little Shango. Some need a little Tahuti. You know, a little Centella and Doki. Some need a little Chi. You know, some need different things in order to get back to the source. But uh, in any case, so the initiate begins to channel a vibration through their vital energy in the, on, a, on an atomic level. And that channeling of that... Peace, everyone. This is Anu Asafo, and I'm Kim, your host. Welcome back, and I will that everyone strong has been productive thus far. And so I'm going to continue this strong with another offering from Enlightenment and Transformation with Anu Asafo. And perhaps this will stimulate your thoughts and actions this strong. So before I get started, let's go over some announcements and talk about some of the resources provided to help you get involved in what's going on with Anu Nation. AnuNation.org is the hub website for the Spiritual Center, the Media Center, and the Self-Help Center. So there you can sign up for the mailing list so that you'll be kept abreast of all the current happenings with any of the components of Anu Nation. There are also links to all of the other websites. So the Spiritual Center SuduluHouse.com is the learning ministry of Anu Nation, and this is where you can go to sign up for the Anu Spiritual Training Course. You'll also find our monthly webinars listed there as well. So if you're ready to start diving into the concepts and calculations of Anu Nation, the courses are there, including the free starter course, which is Orisha Unlocking Your Inner Power. The Media Center is where you'll find all of the enlightenment and transformation shows. And for those who are new to the courses, this part um, of Anu Nation is also supplemental to the training. So there are over 400 shows there. Um, the books are not the only resources for the class. So you'll find a lot of information in the shows that will help you to digest some of the things covered in the course. And don't forget to subscribe to the Enlightenment and Transformation TV channel on YouTube so that you can go back and listen to some of the older shows. The Self-Help Center is where you'll find Osiris Life monthly services, books, and blogs. And you can also schedule consultations there if you don't need, you know, a monthly service. AlphaOmegaStore.com is our online botanica, and this is where you can find all of our products and services. You'll find a lot of the spiritual supplies that you may need for your rituals here. Uh, so all of the materials needed uh, for your rituals that are offered through the shows, webinars, and the websites can be found at AlphaOmegaStore.com. So there you have it. Um, if you're wondering where to get started, start with AnuNation.org, and then you'll be directed to all of the other sites. And just as a reminder, uh, there are links to schedule readings and ask questions on all of the sites. And you'll also find a support us link on all of the sites where you can make donations, you can volunteer for projects, and become a sponsor. So if you're looking to build your brand up, uh, you can view our sponsorship kit by clicking the Sponsor Us field under the Support Us tab at the top of the pages. I will that those announcements help to answer some of your questions on where to start. And now I'm going to break for commercial and we'll be back to discuss this Strong's clip. 
Tadumu House Spiritual Center would like to invite you to join our learning community by encouraging you to sign up for our monthly webinars. Our webinars offer live interactive instruction designed to help empower you in your spiritual evolution and ritual work. The webinars we provide are purposed to help you dive deeper into the concepts and calculations of the chief jagna of Anu Nation, Haru Yuya Asan Anu. Through the decoding and exploration of sound, symbol, ancient and contemporary text, and various other tools used to invoke a state of highest awareness, we are able to abandon the constrictions of dead thought to travel to higher states of awareness, which is our rightful designation. To view our list of webinars, go to seduluhouse.com slash events. Topics for 2016 include meditation, spiritual cleansing, astral projection, chakras, crystals, water magic, candle magic, the third eye, animal totems, dreams, and sex magic. Remember, go to seduluhouse.com slash events to register. But you got to understand something that initiation is a spiritual process. You go through a spiritual initiation. You cannot go through a bodily exercise in order to initiate into a spiritual reality. It doesn't work. You have to use spiritual exercises to initiate into a spiritual reality. Okay? Anybody could take yoga. Anybody could stretch and it feels good. Anyone can stretch and, and, and stretch out their organs and heat up their organs. Does that mean that they're now initiated into the mysteries of a yogi? This means that their body is more prepared to now initiate into the, to, to the mysteries of a yogi. Maybe, if that's the path they want to go. So in the same instance, when I do consecrations, it opens a person's reality up. It opens a person's awareness up. And it covers them with a certain vibration. So now when they want to go do that work to really become an initiate, it's it's much easier. For them, but, okay. But it's not an initiation. And I'll explain why. Uh, initiation is like a marriage. Okay. This is the easy way for you to understand it. An initiation is like a marriage. Okay. So a consecration is like an adoption. So I can adopt you into the family of Anu and share the strength and the power and the wisdom and the clarity of, of my spiritual um, servants and my spiritual guides with you. I can consecrate you into that. But the initiation requires a deeper and more silent and even a more subtle level of contract. Okay. So like I said, initiation is like a marriage and I cannot sell you a marriage can't sell you a marriage. You see, um, what I can do is sell you the ceremony that either precedes, precipitates, accommodates, or uh, follows an actual marriage, but I can't sell you the marriage. Uh, you must perform that act yourself after making a connection and agreeing with a willing partner. It makes sense, right? Um, so you find a partner that wants to work with you or that wants to put up with you, or, you know, depending on your disposition and you make a contractual agreement that we will be married. And in most instances you marry, if that may mean an uh, intercourse or some type of intertwining, uh, but there's a marriage, the marriage, the actual marriage you have to perform yourself. And then there's a ceremony. But sometimes there may be a ceremony beforehand to facilitate the marriage. So, you know, you may bring in priests and you may bring in people in your community so that they may set up a marital bed. And you may drum and give offerings and things like that. And then you go into your into your space and you consummate the marriage. That's making it real. There's no marriage before that. And then when you come out, there's more drumming and dancing and feasting and, and, and wine and all kind of things. You can pay for that. You can pay for that. But to try to just pay for an initiation or to pay for a marriage with an energy that you have never made a real true connection to, which again is so often, is like me charging you to actually rape someone. And, and I know it sounds... Um, it sounds a bit extreme, as you know, 
Um, but that's what it really is. Picture it again in the sense of marriage. Okay. Um, you see your energy that you like or a person that you like. You've never made any real, sincere, true connection. There's no, there's no silent or tacit agreement between the two of you. And you go to someone and say, I want that person. I want that person to live inside of me. And they say, okay, $1,000, give me $5,000, $10,000. i will give you a break. Just give me $600. Right? And what do they do? They take, they take that person and they take you and they smash you together for three days. That's what it is. And then you feel their presence. You feel their energy. You f- and, and through all the elaborate ceremony and the, and the clashing of sounds and, and the, the uh, mystery of it all and the grave and solemn and ominous warnings that you're giving throughout the, your readings, you really feel that you have connected to something, that you have actually done something. But you haven't. You just smashed against something that was not even willing to begin with. You can't sell marriage. Again, like I said, I can perform the ceremony that follows a true marriage, and I can also create an environment where a healthy marriage is possible. The consecration begins. That's that's the introduction to that energy. That's the introduction. Not you sitting down in front of someone's mat and they saying, oh, so-and-so wants you. Okay, well, if so and so wanted you, you'd know. <laughs> you know, you'd know. And you have to want so and so, and you have to then create a relationship. You see, the initiation is, is actually had in a quietness. Initiations, you, you really and honestly initiate yourself. That's the truth of it all. Um, it may happen during a walk one day, it may happen in a quiet moment when you're just sitting in your room. You know, it, it may happen uh, when you're swimming one day or when you're lost at sea or lost in New York or whatever. But an initiation is a quiet and personal thing. Now, the connection to a greater community and acknowledgement of a greater community, that's not a quiet. That, that's a public thing. That's something that you bring a priest and things like that for. But an initiation change changes the pitch and vibration of of you at an atomic level because really that's your your atoms are the medium for initiation now i know many of you may listen now and say well yeah i feel like i am initiated most of you are not 99.9 percent of you are not i have to be honest with you it is there's, there's few of you because the first thing that you understand about the initiation is that there's a there's a character change how many of you will say in one breath, yeah, I feel like I'm connected to these energies and I don't need this and I don't need that. Uh, well, first of all, if you say that, then I already know you're not initiated because that's a pretty narcissistic statement. But the thing is, how many of you have that, but then you look at your life and you can see that the vibratory pitch of your life is not much further than the people around you. See, initiates, what they do is they transcend the backwardness of their race. That's what an initiate does. You know, um, Races and and collectives and groups of people, they're given religion. And religion serves each group. There's supposed to be more than one religion. You know, you don't always have to go into that homogenous thing where we're all one and we're serving one God. That doesn't work for everybody because everyone ethnically and genetically has a different set of needs. You know, now, of course, we all, most of us, you know, I'm assuming need to, to breathe Um, and need to consume something in order to produce energy, most of us. Uh, But then after that, things things change. We have a different set of needs, and not only collectively and racially, we have different karma that we have to address. So therefore, it would require a different set of of codexes and doctrines and pedagogy to bind us back to the source, which religion is, binding back to the source. Okay, we all have different sources, and even if we said we have one sources, we all strayed and fell from the sources in different manner. Okay, so the uh, multitude of religions, there's nothing wrong with that. There's even nothing wrong with a multitude of deities. You know, um, polytheism is not a curse because some of us need different things in order to get back. Some need a little Shango, some need a little Tahuti, you know, a little Centella and Doki. 
Some need a little chi. You know, some need different things in order to get back to the source. But uh, in any case, so the initiate begins to channel a vibration through their vital energy in the, on, a, on an atomic level. And that channeling of that. Welcome back to a new Asafo. Again, I'm Kim, your host. And the clip that was played again, in case you missed in the beginning of the show, came from Sunday's Chief Speak show. And um, I wanted to play it again because uh, it was a really strong, strong <laughs> clip. And there was a lot of information uh, that was given in the clip and no one really commented on it after, you know, the insight was shared. So I thought that maybe perhaps the reason why is because um, it was just a bit too much and you may have needed time to process it. I know like a lot of the shows that she does, is they, they can be pretty heavy. So it'll take, it a, take you a minute to kind of process what was said. So maybe perhaps that's what the deal was, but I wanted to kind of break it up a little bit and go over some of what was said. Um, again, I encourage you to go back to listen to Chief Speaks, the last Chief Speaks um, show, and you can find it on Enlightenment and Transformation TV that's on our YouTube channel and listen to it in its entirety to get the you know full gist of everything because it was a really, really uh, good uh, insight that it gave, especially if you are one who's thinking of initiating into a mystery system or some type of mystery system or a tradition. So one of the things that I want to point out that he said in the beginning was that you cannot go through a bodily exercise in order to initiate into a spiritual reality. You have to use spiritual exercises to initiate into a spiritual reality. And, you know, that was that was really heavy, heavy for me. And I just wanted I just thought, you know, what does he mean by this? So I had to sit with it and think about it for a while. And um, and um, I just thought, you know, I get for me what it kind of translated into is, you know, you have physical movements that we do, but there's no spiritual connection. There's no inward commitment that you kind of uh, make an agreement on with yourself so you're just you know kind of going through the motions and it's just like this it's just like that with rituals you may um, get the the instructions or the rec or the directions and you go through the movements you know you buy the ingredients but uh, you you know you approach it almost like a lab experiment you know step one do this step two do that and then you just kind of hope it works because you're so focused on getting the steps right you're really not connected spiritually to what you're actually doing or the meaning behind what you're doing um but your actions, you know so your actions before and after the after the ritual on top of that they don't coincide with what you did during the ritual so like um what i mean by that is you you don't um like before you start the ritual because a lot of people think that the ritual starts when you sit down to actually do the steps but it can actually start before and after you're done so what i mean is um your actions before and after don't really uh coincide with what you're doing so you don't make an environment that would welcome or willingly kind of usher in the results that you were going for in the ritual. So just like um, when you change your diet or, uh, you know, you change your diet or you do something for health reasons, you may go through the physical changes, but spiritually you're not, you haven't committed to what you set out to do. And so this is why change doesn't last very long. And I'll give you another example. I thought about this the other day. A long time ago, I uh, had um, a little accident with my finger. And so my, I got my finger wedged between like um, my car door. My car door was open. And I got a wedge between a car door and a post. And my car was still, I didn't realize it at the time, but my car was still in drive. I was trying to get out of the car. And so my hand was, finger was caught between the door and the post and the car was still moving. So it was just kind of grinding it between this, uh, between the door and the post. And so, you know, now I look at my finger and, and, and the scar is still there. 
you know, it's better. It's much, much better. You can barely notice it, but I still see little signs of the scar. And so I thought about it once. I said, no, why is this scar still here? Especially if we know that our body regenerates, um, uh, you know, so every, every, you know, so many years, seven years or what have you. Why do I still see scars of this accident? And so I had to think about it. And I think it's ultimately because I haven't dealt with or and it's I haven't completely dealt with um, the, I guess, unseen things that led up to the accident and that happened, you know, during the accident. Because when I thought about, okay, what led up to that event? So just really quick, like uh, what I was doing is uh, my daughter, I think she was out of school that day or something, and I still had to work. So I was rushing and rushing and rushing. And I was like, oh, let me, you know, stop and get her some food or whatever. And um, when I did that, in other words, I was rushing myself. I was procrastinating. So I was in a hurry. (laughs) I was procrastinating because I was in a hurry because I didn't do something I should have done earlier. And I was, you know, trying to make sure I got to work on time. And uh, another thing I thought about was during that time, I was working on changing my diet. But. I wasn't putting my daughter through those same changes. And, you know, I had to ask myself, now, how can I improve my diet if I'm eating one thing and she's eating another? And, you know, there's there's so much more with that, but I'm just going to (laughs) stop. There's so many more things I can I can tack on to what's wrong with that state, you know, with that um, plan. But I'm going to stick with this one for now. And, but the point is, is that, um, those are just two things. I was procrastinating and I was, um, not making real changes, I guess, you know, when it came to my diet, because I was only doing it for myself and I was still, you know, letting her eat whatever she wanted. So, um, and actually this reminds me of, a a chief speaks caller, actually several, because this, there were more other people that have the same issue but um, they call in and they say they want to be you know I'm trying to make all these spiritual changes and you know I'm spiritual but you know my husband or my kids aren't or something like that but they want to make all these changes and you don't include your children or other family members and you know I mean this is this is just not going to work either um, what's going to happen is you're not going to stick to it and you just kind of be in and out of the tradition or whatever it is you're trying to do you'll eat healthy some days and some days you won't or you know you do a ritual here and there but you know you're not really all the way in it um you know or you just do it when it's convenient or you'll have to leave your family and so um and we know most of us aren't strong enough to do that so we just kind of end up costuming and pretending that we're going through these changes our spirit isn't in there we haven't made that spiritual connection you know and so that's kind of uh also what he was talking about in that clip but to go back to the example I was using with myself um I was procrastinating and I had not dealt with you know other underlying issues so even though I went through the bodily movements of getting stitches you know putting aloe on it or you know whatever I did whatever else I did I hadn't made my environment or reality one that would make an accident like that, you know, more difficult to happen. So if I cut out some of the some of the underlying issues that were surrounding that accident, it would, you know, probably would never happen again. So, you know, it physically healed, but, you know, years later, the scar is still there. So this is what, you know, he was speaking about when he was saying uh, when he was talking about initiations. And, you know, I understand because the things we do, you know, under this American culture is just, you know, they're so hollow. We really don't connect to things in a spiritual way. We just kind of you know, do things like a recipe. So <laughs> the same thing, you know, with things like uh, another example, it would be like going to high school or college. And I use that example because that's usually one of the biggest commitments that we all make. 
Now, you know, we all know honestly that the public school system doesn't really, it's not really designed in a way that um, you can like kind of connect to it spiritually. I, I guess you can, but it's not really set up for that. But, you know, we still make these commitments. We, we still participate in those rites of passage or in those rituals. So we go through the motions, you know. But who can really remember or connect, rather, with the lesson that you learned in your, I don't know, eighth grade algebra class? I mean, really. <laughs> and even when you may have gone to college, um, did you go because you really wanted to master a certain subject or because... You just kind of wanted, you know, the certification that you thought would ensure a high salary, you know, after you finish school. So, but anyway, once we leave, you know, the church or the mosque or whatever tradition we come from, we kind of have the same behavior with African traditions. And honestly, they just don't work that way. You, you know, you just, you won't have any real power. So you'll just kind of continue to go through these physical motions. So, you know, think about this if you're thinking about um, getting initiated or embarking on something similar. I know in the clip he used the example of uh, taking yoga or getting married, you know. If you're, or even if you're, you know, deciding to become certified, you know, like in Reiki or yoga or something, it's much more than going to you know spend a weekend at a beachside retreat or something and you know I mean deep down we really do know this because you know what happens when we get back home you know we fall off or we kind of go into this little depression because you know we're chasing that high from the last retreat or you're looking you miss the people that were there and you miss the environment you know we say uh, my family doesn't understand me or you know they just don't get it you know they just or we say they're not conscious and it's because we are still kind of chasing the high from the, the retreat we were on or you know that group of people that all came there with a specific intention in mind not really understanding that that's just what it was everybody was you know in a similar mind state uh, they had paid to be there and the environment was purposely set up for that and so our homes, we have to learn to make, uh, make our environment or wherever we are, that experience we're, that we're looking for. So we have to include our children and we have to include our family and we have to, you know, redecorate or whatever so that we can, you know, recreate those, um, those moments that we say we want to kind of be in instead of, you know, every six months or so or once a year you know, pay to go on some type of retreat. So, you know, that's that if you're thinking about um, being becoming initiated. And there's one other thing I wanted to say about initiation is um, I've always wondered, you know, how <laughs> someone could travel to Africa or wherever and you pay thousands of dollars and completely put yourself in the hands of a stranger. And, you know, you're like in the middle of nowhere. You don't know the people. You don't know the city the language or none of that you know and you've got an ocean separating you from from things that are somewhat familiar and not only that you're marrying or tying yourself to that house you know that house the responsibilities the ideologies and traditions of it and you know so much more so you know I think about that I don't know if we all really think that far into it but this is what initiations and you know what chief was saying in the clip why he possibly maybe you know doesn't initiate too many people because we come with a mindset of we just want to you know do it and you know give me the power give me the beads give me this and I'm out so we don't really understand what we are binding ourselves to by going through these ceremonies you know we just kind of get excited about a new way of doing things or we like to seem exotic or different you know I guess Especially if we really haven't, you know, really haven't uh, accomplished anything else or don't have anything else really going on in our lives. This makes us feel kind of different and separate, you know, from others. We can kind of poke our chest out a little bit. But spirituality just, it just doesn't work that way, you know. So when he said that you honestly initiate yourself, 
that is, you know, that's what it, that, that's what it means. You make this inward commitment, you know, and that's why, you know, initiations into things are, you know, making that decision is a quiet and a personal decision. You don't really go out and make um, a huge announcement that you're about to make certain changes in your life. You know, just think about it. If you really talk to someone, if someone asked you what you were doing, you told them about all these changes that you're going to make, you know, they think you were crazy <laughs> because, you know, and, and for one, you may not even be aware of all the changes that you have to make at that time, you know, so it, it begins to get, if you really connect it to a spiritually, it's really like an indescribable process, you know, but if you're just doing something kind of on the surface, like, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a fruitarian or something, you, you know, you can kind of boast to people about that. And you may even start to condemn other people for, for not making some of those same choices just because, you know, you like to separate yourself from people or make yourself seem a little bit special, you know, more special than others. And really you're not. I mean, <laughs> but, um, you know, when you really decide to initiate to initiate into something, it's not it's just not um, something that you really go out and announce, you know. So maybe you understand it a little bit better and maybe um, think about some of your situations. Like I said, I was just looking at my finger the other day and, and when I heard this um, that insight from Sunday, it made me think about it. And so, again, I just wanted to play that clip because there was so much said in it and no one really commented on it Sunday. So I was thinking maybe if I play it again or part of it again, you know, you'll go back and check it out and maybe we can have a conversation about it you know on the next chief speaks but again uh just to remind you all the format's changing so let's make this last chief speaks count a little bit and um, try to have a better conversation or you know and as well as you know continue to share what we're going to share but the format's going to change so you may not be able to make all those uh, call in and have all those questions like we normally do um again um i want to also remind you all and relate this lesson to meditation you can also apply it to that which is the next webinar that's coming up uh i'll be going over some of the basics about meditation and a, a little bit uh more like techniques and things but honestly meditation can very well be you know uh, it can become what we're speaking of today like just this hollow physical exercises where you're just kind of reaping some of the physical benefits of like maybe sleeping better lowering you know blood pressure and things like that but um, it can be a spiritual experience as well so uh, just a reminder just kind of take some time and think about some of the things that you do or maybe if you were thinking about initiations and things to go back and check that out and really ask yourself if, if you're really ready to make that commitment and if you're ready to kind of tie yourself or bind yourself to the people that are you know you that you're choosing to do the ceremony for you you know just be a little bit more mindful that's all and to remind you <laughs> that um the webinar is on january 9th so you again you can register for that at seduluhouse.com slash events and so that is a new asafo for this strong. Thank you again for tuning in. And uh, I will speak with you all next Wednesday. Peace. Where do you start when everything seems to be falling apart? Try to be sane in an insane asylum. How long you think you're going to manage? Your sanity ain't going to manage long in an insane asylum. Everybody got to be sane or you're going to go insane too. Who's sending me this message? Am I not getting the message because I keep seeing it? And I'm trying to feel the energy because at one time I was fearful of it because I did see it. I have a lot. My schedule is like really busy and kind of balancing that with um, spiritual life. And um, I... I guess you can call myself kind of a loner.